We're here at Shelfside, and have you ever had a game where it doesn't really fit very properly? So on one hand, we have games like Takenoko, and man, does everything fit so nicely. This comes in the game, and everything just has their own separate cubby. So nice. But what if you have some games, and you have all these pieces, but no way to store them? So we have two games here specifically, and notice how they're both fancy flight. But we have Game of Thrones right here, and then my favorite game, Eldritch Horror. Now, Daniel and I have spent a long time trying to figure out how to store these, and I think I have a really good solution for Game of Thrones. So we'll start with this, then we'll go to Eldritch Horror. Let me show you guys what's up, put it on the table here. So before I open this box, I'm just going to show you what I do with typical Fantasy Flight games. So when you get a typical Fantasy Flight games, this is an expansion for Eldritch Horror, you're going to get a giant coffin like this. Sure, you can put all your things in the middle, but you're leaving out a lot of space. Like, sure, Daniel pointed out that you can store stuff underneath here and here. But at the end of the day, it's just really frustrating. So the first thing I do after I unbox everything, of course, is just throw away this answer. I know it hurts, but it's for the greater good. So then we have the storage solution that I did for Game of Thrones. Game board, sure, just this. But here's where we get into the meat of this. So let's start with how I organize the factions, because that's the most important to me. So in these asymmetrical games, everyone's going to have their own separate pieces or separate colors, whatever. And what I did is I actually got these little plastic holders from the Dollar Tree. Now, I don't know if this was for baby food, kid food, or even jewelry, but they do the job so well, and they only cost, again, like a dollar. Anyways, so how I stored it is that everything for one specific faction, so for the example, the Baratheons that are yellow, are going to be in this box. So this is everything they need to get started. Obviously, there's more stuff, but this is kind of like the bare essentials. So if I'm playing a game, I can be like, yo, so you're playing the Baratheons, I give you this, you open it up and you just dump out everything and you have all the little pieces you need. And then you get your little player tokens and you're ready to start. And so this is for every single faction. And I just found this a very clean, easy way to do it. And it's also very solid. These things are pretty durable. So for the rest of the factions, basically the same thing. Sometimes I'm able to slip in a little piece. If not, it's fine. Ignore that. Right, so in some instances, there's some separate pieces. If they're not able to be stored here for, for whatever reason, I put them in here. So this is the next step of this storage solution. Oh, before I open this up, this is a Plano box. So these are traditionally for like fishing gear, but you can do a really good job of using these for just little pieces, specifically board gaming pieces in our case. And you can find these at Walmart, any fishing store like Bass Pro Shop. Amazon does a good job, of course. You could probably find some variation of this at a Dollar Tree, but I wouldn't guarantee it. Anyways, we're going to open this up, and all six of the factions are at the top, so I organize this in a column-like manner. So this is everything from the Starks, so you have the Stark tokens that are a little bigger. These are the action tokens. And then here you have the rest of the stuff they need. And then the next one is Baratheon, so this is everything that else that Baratheon needs, and then their tokens as well. So these right here, they have their own separate copy because we have a lot of space. But this is for the Raiders, and this is for the Hourglass. And these could totally be in the same area, not a big deal. Now, for right here, these are all the spaces that need to be occupied on the board, depending on what players you play with. I kind of put these in their own cubby because they don't really belong with anything else. But you will definitely have to take out King's Landing when you play the game, right? Because that's always on the board. So that could definitely, it could be in its own area. Next things we have are these cards. Now, they're not really organized in a specific manner, but I've never had any trouble just putting it in a plastic bag. So you want to put it in a plastic bag instead of a rubber band so it doesn't start jumbling around in the box, and you don't want to put a rubber band because it can kind of strain the, the card stock. And then we got these little optional pieces. Now, because these are optional game variant pieces that are small, I decided to put them in a separate bag. And this bag isn't exactly the highest quality because I'm not going to use this very often. But it's nice to kind of have in their separate bag if I decide to play with a different variant, then my mind goes to, oh, separate bag, separate variant, use this bag. So one more thing. So when we're putting this game away, when you have all these hard boxes, it's really easy to just put the board on top of it. And it just fits really nicely. It's not too much movement. It's very solid as a result. That's kind of why I like these plastic pieces over plastic bags. Elder Chore, we're going to show you guys how I did it. this guy. 
So Eldritch Horror is a little different in the fact that it's not an asymmetrical game with different factions, rather it's a co-op game. So what I'm going to have to do here is use a different approach. I can't sort it by faction. So again, open it up. It's FFG game. Throw away the coffin insert. All right, so we're going to take out this board right here. And look at that. It's a Plano box. So the Plano boxes, again, I used this Plano box in Game of Thrones, but it was a smaller version. So this one's a little bigger. Again, you can buy it at Walmart, fishing stores, etc. Let's go ahead and take this out. And you'll notice that it has every single small piece that you would need to play Eldritch Horror. So FFG, they don't give you anything to store the game at all. As far as I'm aware, all they give you are these plastic bags, which really aren't going to cut it because you're using them already to store these cards. So you're going to have to buy this Plano to store all these pieces. If you have it like this, when you're playing the game, you can be like, oh, hey, I need health tokens. All right, I'm going to get that. All right, I don't need it. Put it back. Instead of opening a Ziploc, trying to put the piece in, fidgeting with it, zipping up, and putting it back. Big pain. It might be a little tight, so you have to adjust it to your fingers. Mine are a little smaller. If you have bigger fingers, you might have to make these wider. Yeah, what do you mean by uh, adjusting? Uh, people don't own Plano boxes. Uh, what's the big thing that's so cool about them? Uh, yeah, okay. So the reason why they're so cool is because these dividers, now when you buy them, it comes with a bunch of dividers. Now you can take these out, and you can slot it in a separate area. So you can kind of customize it to your preference. You see right here, this column for the investigators, there's no dividers, and we just were able to stack all the investigators like that. What's also cool about these Plano boxes is that they store the FFG cards so well. So these are the tiny FFG cards, and even with sleeves, they fit in this area really well. You can grab it before the game, dish it out, put it on the board, bam. Same thing with these artifacts and condition cards. Oh, don't look at this. <laughs> What's also cool is that we're able to put these gates in and the dice in the same area. So these monsters are ones that tend to get set aside before games. So I'm like, hey, I got to set up a uh, shub demonetized and I'm going to take this out, put it aside. Bam. Now we have it. I can see all of them at a glance. I can kind of follow through it almost like a, uh, like a bookshelf of sorts. Very convenient. As you can also see here, we have the lead investigator token and we have the artifact token. Expedition. Expedition. Expedition there. <laughs> going back here, we have the clues. Now, these you're probably just going to have to take out and put it on the board because you have to lay them down. But I find them so easy to just see like this and to put it in a, in a very structural place after the game. Same goes with these improvements. Now, you're not going to be using improvements too much during the game, so it's nice to just kind of have them here as a reference. Bam. Okay. Whew. For the rest of the box, we have these plastic bags that come with the game. So these actually do a good job of just stacking your stuff. So not bad, FFG. So we have two of those plastic bags. They store all the cards pretty nicely. They feel good. So yeah, that is basically it for all of my storage solutions. Later on, we could probably do other games like Caverna, more Euro style games, maybe my foam cores or whatnot. But yeah, uh, anything else, Daniel? What's a foam core? Oh, so a foam core is the thing where you cut out like white foam and you you make your own insert you're basically making your own insert for the game i'll take your word for it all right cool yeah if you guys like more videos like this let us know see you guys later bye bye